Hey guys, welcome to another Trade Genius Podcast. Bob and Phil here. As always, guys, banks are sitting on hundreds of billions of dollars in investment grade securities that are underwater. But is that going to crash the system? We're going to talk about that. Let's dive in. Trade Genius. Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Usually I do fun ads, I talk about our service, but I wanna be serious with you for a second. We've been helping a lot of people trading for a long time. As you can see here, I wanna let them do the talking for me for a change. But most importantly, we wanna help you too. If you've not joined our service yet, come check us out, tradelikeagenius.com. Full service, you know, we have chat room, we have the algorithms for you, we give trades out every day, we educate you. So go to tradelikeagenius.com, check us out. What you get out of our service, is much, much more than what you put into it. And we'd like to see you in the room. Thanks for listening. Okay, Bob. So a lot of stuff's been circulating on Twitter in terms of all of these FDIC insured banks are underwater and the FDIC has nowhere near the limits to cover all of this stuff and the whole system's going to implode. What say you about all that? Yeah, I put this in the category, Phil, of the dollar is going to crash because it's really, it's it's just another thing that people don't understand. And it's probably one of the most frustrating things that you and I have been in this here for a long, long time. And this is the kind of data that goes around that unnecessarily scares people that is totally irrelevant. And what we're really seeing here, this is primarily the mismatch of the loan of the uh, the. Um, yeah, I guess it is the loans, the loans that the government asked them to take on in terms of treasury debt that are marked to market underwater. Right. But it's really irrelevant uh, because they, they, they have no need to sell these loans off. They can always park if they need cash. They can park these at par with the Federal Reserve and let them basically roll out over the next you know three to five years. And we're already halfway through this process anyway. If you notice, those numbers aren't as bad as they were because they are rolling them off. And so what I want to talk to you about on this, Phil, was that I think this is really part of the setup. And, you know, I were talking pre-call here that, you know, this ties right into the Fed wanting to cause, I think in their view, they would like to have a growth recession, if you will, not a recession recession, where they could take off the break here a little bit and lower the interest rates to allow these banks to recapitalize. Because look, face it, the banks aren't lending anybody any money anymore. So they make a better return just lending it to the government and then parking with the Fed. We really don't have have a banking system anymore. We have a basically a Fed government, you know, uh, circle jerk going on right now, and not a uh, and not a functioning lending market. So the banks aren't going to be in any more trouble than they already are. And all the Fed has to do is lower interest rates, and this problem just solves itself. Or they hold out for two or three more years, and as regional banks do get in trouble, they just get rolled into the bigger banks. So the Fed doesn't care. They have a solution for both. I think you agree with me. Do you have? anything addition to add to that? Um, not much, but yeah, I agree that I really think the plan here for the Fed is to get us into a recession. At least that's what they're hoping for, because you're going to, uh, like you said, they're going to improve the balance sheets of the banks because then these underwater assets improve and maybe they go back to, you know, break even on those and then they can, you know, get out of them or re-hedge them properly. So that's one. And then two, inflation, right? Uh, I think inflation would come down and, and they'd get a big help in that with the recession. And, you know, third, we haven't had a recession for like 14, 15 years, and that's extremely abnormal. So it's all due, I, I, you know, for a lot of people, I think it will come as a surprise, especially the younger crowd. They've never really seen the effects of a, of a deep recession. But for those of us that have been around the block, no, we're, we're way overdue. And largely what we're seeing now in the market is just, you know, squeezing the last drops of blood out of the turnip, so to speak. And like we showed yesterday, right, the highest concentration in stocks since the Great Depression. I don't think we're gonna have a Great Depression, but, you know, could we have an economic malaise that goes all the way through 2025 and spill over into 2026, absolutely, totally could happen. So you just don't want to be stuck in a situation where you're all in at the top and then now you're underwater from a two-year pullback that's going to take five to eight years to recover. Yeah, and the thing about the Great Depression, it was it, the Great Depression was awful for about 25% of the population and 75% of the population was just fine. You know, I was stories from my mother-in-law growing up in the Great Depression. Her father and mom, she was a teacher. He, he had a job. They never lost their job, their home. They paid their mortgage. They paid their bills. You know, they took care of the, every once in a while a bum would 
slip through. They had a garden, you know, but this one's going to be different. What they're going to do here, Phil, they're going to spread the problem out and it's already started to 100% of the people. And we're all going to pay for it through higher inflation and lower income standards. And basically, it's, it's going to be a grind down. In some ways, it's going to be worse because more people are going to feel it. So we'll talk more about that when I think it's going to show up. But I think we may get an event or two, but I think it's just going to be like being grain in a millstone. And and when we're washed out of this thing in the next five to 10 years, people, I think, are going to be pretty exhausted. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you would like to join us in the Discord rooms, head over to tradegenius.co and check out our specials over there. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on tomorrow's episode. Take care. Trade Genius.